Welcome back to this Lexicon Prime Time Repair video and we have through the post from silicon-arc at silicon-arc.co.uk and we have a new AD561JD uh, DAC chip to replace. So the first thing we're going to do is hook up the oscilloscope so we can see what's going on before we replace the chip. Um, So the output of the DAC comes out through this section. These 4051 switches seem to be adjusting gain, um, probably for the different sample rates. And I'm going to attempt to pick them up here, which is where they return back to the main board off this daughter board. So U13 pin 7 and U13 pin 1. So if we just check the input from this XLR pin there. Pin 1, I can easily get to there. Pin 7 goes to this resistor back here. I'm just going to check to that end. Great, so we've got everything hooked up and the sine wave that you can see there at the moment is what I'm sending from Pro Tools, just a signal generator. Um, so let's put the power back in. And turn her on. So we can see it's definitely not a sine wave coming out. And if I move it, we can move them along. Okay, so that's where we are. Let's turn it off. And we're definitely going to connect up to Earth so nothing gets zapped. So this is the chip. Okay, let's see what happens. Look at that, beautiful sine waves. There's a couple of calibrations we need to do on this DAC. Um, the first one is uh, to set the comparator level and it wants us to send in a one kilohertz tone which has a voltage peak of five volts uh, and I'm presuming that we have the inputs turned up fully here so so this blue trace is showing us what our maximum voltage will be there so let's turn it up So that's showing a 5 volt peak reading now, pin 5. And we're not far off, we're just one LED away. So let's just turn our 9 until that LED comes on. There we go. 
pin 7 of U8 is how we're going to set the output level of the DAC and it's supposed to read a peak level of 5 volts the same it's reading a little high now so we'll just okay no oh. okay that'll do 5 volts let's see how she sounds okay let's do a drum test Okay, but we still don't have anything back on B. So let's have a look at that. So those two delays come off the daughter board on this connector here, goes through a de-emphasis stage and a low pass filter. Uh, there's a couple of op amps here that feed to these op amps and this section here in the dotted line goes onto the front panel um, and the signal then goes to the roll-offs so um, onto the low-pass filters for the roll-offs there so I think a good place to start would be just to check this op-amp before it heads off to the front panel. U15 is here, pin 1 is engine A, yep, pin 7 is engine B, yep. So then they head off to the front panel, and 22 and 23. Twenty-two, yep. Twenty-three, yep. So they both get to the front panel. And then at 13 and 14, they come back from the front panel. Thirteen, yep. Engine B. Nothing. engine A okay so it's not coming back from the front panel okay we'll trace out the working one first so we can see what's going on so pin 1 from this op amp goes to pin 22 on that front panel and then from there it goes off to this switch and when it's on it comes out the switch and then it goes off to a fader so uh, yeah so that gets to that fader I'm just going to make sure that the fader is not is in the middle so it's not shorting out on one end or the other just in case we need to get onto that correct end so, yeah. And in fact, that now will all go back to pin 1. Okay, so let's see the second engine, which is pin 7. And that's going to the next pin along. And it comes up to the switch. Yep. 
comes out of the switch. Yep. And then... Oh. That doesn't... get to the fade there. There's a trace comes here. There's a sphere. Obviously goes through... to the other side of the board. So that trace is broken somewhere along the line. Um, oh, I know. I just let's. I'll plug it back in, and then we'll short that out, and then we'll see if the delay comes back. So just to check to see if this is right, I'm going to use the crocodile clips just to join the output of that switch to that fader. Yeah, so that's the engine B back. Um, I think rather than take the whole front panel off, I think I'm just going to run a wire. Um, because there's only going to be a trace that's broken anyway, probably on a via. I'll clean up this switch while I'm here um, and just run a wire there. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so just what happened there, I think there was a dry joint on this connection. I couldn't see anything, but now I've, sol I've soldered it. We have continuity. I don't need to run the wire. So <laughs> that ended up just being a dodgy joint on there. Let's have a um, plug her in. Okay, so engine A. Engine B. I'm going to check the roll off. All that's left to do now is put this RAM extension back together. Um, the owner had bought some spare RAM chips because we thought that the distortion was being caused by a RAM error. Um, probably better earth up. And Luckily, these are labelled with pin 1. Okay, that's all the RAM chips in. Just double check, looking the correct way. No legs are hanging out. Lovely. Now, <coughs> these two chips need to go back into the um, original RAM section. And now I have to undo what I've done to take the expansion memory off. I've got to put it back on again. Okay, and we have to add these two ICs. Okay. 
So we've just had Christmas and I took a few days off this repair. Um, what I have thought about is those other caps in the power supply. Um, so there's a couple of extra caps we're going to change. And these are the 10 UF ceramic capacitors that we need to add to our DC to DC converter, which I haven't added yet. Okay, so I've already removed C1 and C33 is this cap here just coming off the regulator. Luckily, uh, they're quite small these, so I think that fits in there just about. if I can get this into shot so these are the two I've already replaced one of them is faulty I'm going to replace these two as well and this one here this is why you should never pull anything or use any force this all the solder is loose but this leg when it was cut originally um, the metal's too big to go through the hole, so I think I'm going to have to try and cut that end bit off. And the same with this one. And this leg here. So while not a complete service, as I haven't changed all the capacitors in here, um, at least now we've got the delays back working, it's not distorted, and the engine B is working still. So at some point it will need a full recap, um, but I think this is about all we have for today on this one. So catch you next time.